When I started out, um, I started out as a keyboard player when I was about 16. I was playing keys and writing songs and eventually I started rapping and I had uh, uh, the first rap group in Memphis to be on MTV. Uh, that was when I was about 17. And then from there, uh, I started getting into producing. Uh, my father, Willie Mitchell, who was Al Green's producer, I grew up in the studio watching him make records all the time. And so I started really getting into R&B and uh, by the time I was, I don't know, about in my 30s, uh, I was really heavy into it in engineering and eventually my career took me to uh, recording people like Buddy Guy and John Mayer and Rod Stewart mixing stuff for Al Green and uh, Mark Ronson record. I got to engineer that as well. I produce all kinds of music. Uh, my studio is known for soul and R&B music, um, but I do a lot of pop, a lot of blues, uh, even some rock stuff. What excites me about producing music is uh, creating something from nothing or from having an idea in your head and being able to make that thought reality. A typical day starts out, uh, we normally set up in the morning, uh, get the band in at 10 or 11, and um, it normally takes two or three hours to get the sounds dialed in, you know, depending on what kind of music you're doing. Um, and after that, we just, uh, after that, we record on into the night. So the uh, average day could be anywhere from eight hours to 14 hours. A sound is everything because if you can't, you have to be able to feel the music. My dad once said to me, we're not selling music, we're selling feelings. And people buy music that they can feel, so the sound is everything. How well something translates from the studio to your car or your house, uh, monitoring has always been an issue. Uh, it's really one of the things that I like most about the Adams monitors. Uh, when I got my first set and you know things translate well uh, from the studio to the in the other environment. I like my monitors to have a, a, a realistic uh, sound. You know, I don't like, I don't use, I don't really like to use subs. Um, so one of the things that turned me on about the Atoms was they were giving me the low end that I needed without dialing in a subwoofer because um, it's just a personal thing with me because everybody doesn't have, so you know, people listening on headphones, you don't have a sub. You know, everybody doesn't have subs in their houses, in their cars. Um, so I, I think a good monitor should be able to give you what you want with two speakers. The first time I heard Adam's monitors, I was in, you know, music store and um, I had a, I had a session coming up and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to break down and buy some monitors. And so I was going through this monitor, that monitor, and listening and listening. And when it got to the Atoms, it just, they blew everything out of the water. It was like unreal. Um, they sounded so rich, you know, they had the bass and the clarity. And so I was thinking, I was like, well, maybe is there something wrong with these other speakers? And I, I did it again, and back to the Atoms, I was like, well, no, those Atoms are just awesome. So that was my first set. And then uh, I had a pretty big session in here about a year after that, and they wanted to use a room that we didn't, an uh, unfinished studio that we had. Um, and I was like, hmm, instead of buying amps and stuff, I'll just go get another set of Atoms.